Leslie, uh, the way back home, just going to read an extract. Grace sank back gratefully into the air-conditioned taxi. The heat and noise of Port of Spain's Pocardas International Airport faded into the distance, taking with it any lingering doubts. Her three children initially had concerns about her leaving the UK, where she had made her home for more than 40 years, unaware that she and their father had planned this for many years. After a while, her sons, who were both busy with careers, wives and families, became more encouraging, as her determination and participation became apparent. Her daughter, Lydia, however, remained sceptical. So it's on page 102. Repeating stories of people she had heard of, of who had retired back home only to drop dead a few months later, or couples who divorced due to the husband simply, simply slipping easily into the old life of liming. That means having a good time. With friends or playing dominoes while the wife was expected to occupy herself at home. However, Grace held firm. Once the shock of her decision had passed, the children supported her, surprised that their parents had saved sufficient money to not only buy her childhood home, but also su su supplement her pension. In the end, it was Lydia who had helped with the arrangements, completing the mountains of paperwork involved in tying up one life and starting another. Grace thought fondly of Errol and her resolve grew stronger. She thought too of her siblings who had been flung in different directions across the globe. Her brother to Toronto, her big sister Gwen to New York and then Atlanta. She herself had ended up training as a nurse in a cold and friendly country, savaged by war, ravaged by war. This was the first time Grace had returned to Trinidad since she'd left all those years ago, mindful of her mother's instructions to make a life for herself in the motherland. Work hard, keep your head down, and don't come back. She had said to her younger daughter, aware of the limit, limited options available in their small town. Grace knew that her mother had her best interests at heart, and when Mama had months left to live, she had moved to Toronto to be cared for before by Grace's brother, determined that Grace would not come back to Trinidad. Grace listened absently to Neville's chatter as the taxi navigated the dusty roads and was comforted by his familiar patois. Her own accent had long since been diluted, only, only emerging during conversations to friends or family back home when she would be teased about her more English than the Queen. Over the years, the telephone calls turned to talk of where other friends and family had moved to as more and more people left her small town. You see this? This is where the print mill was, Neville gestured, cutting into her thoughts. You remember? Grace nodded her head. It's a university now, he continued. How long you been gone? Long time. Back from England, eh? He shook his head. Lots been coming back, you know, and not just from the wind rush. Grace nodded again. She had never felt that England was her home, despite raising a family there and giving more than 40 years' service to the NHS. In the early years of working in hospitals, patients would hiss at her. I don't want your dirty black hands on me. Grace would always reply, well, I'm the only nurse here. It's me or nothing. And if you want to read the rest, you have to get the book. <laughs> Let's go.